First thing I want to do is to congratulate uh, this year's winner of the David A. Gibson Award for Excellence, and uh, because uh, that person, man or woman, is stepping into some really big shoes and has really received a prestigious award. Because I, in 47, 48 years now of practicing the law, I don't know of a lawyer for whom I had a more profound respect, both for uh, legal skills and for uh, ethical values and for professionalism than, than Dave Gibson. Just outstanding uh, lawyer, and not just in the family law, but in civil law and over in the criminal courts. He was also an uh, expert practitioner there, and he, he was a lawyer whom you could uh, if he told you something, you could take it to the bank. You didn't have to put it in writing. You didn't have to get three witnesses. You didn't have to go to court and have a hearing on it. If he said it, you could book it, and it was done. That's just the kind of a guy David was. He just had, he was high principled. He was a, um, he's a pretty vigorous uh, uh, adversary. If you happen to get on the other side uh, of litigation that he had an interest in, he. Uh, did not let the fact that he was friends with his uh, protagonist uh, interfere with his uh, zeal to represent his client with uh, fervor, and he did that. But he always had that little glint in his eye, you know. He, he took his work very seriously, but he did not take himself uh, all that seriously. He recognized that human beings are fragile and make errors and make mistakes, and stumble and fumble, and he was able to understand that and put it into the practice. He could see the weaknesses in the other side's case. He could spot the weaknesses in the testimony of those witnesses who appeared against him, and he could plumb it out of them with cross-examination in a way that uh, made the juries understand this person is not telling the gospel truth. And that's an art form that you can read all the books on cross-examination. You can study the cross-examinations of great lawyers throughout our wonderful legal history. But it's something that's sort of innate, and, and David had that. He could, he could look at the witness, and he'd get that kind of little jackass-eating cactus smirk on his face and, and uh, ask a question that was just so simple and so short, and just whoop, the truth would come out, and the lie would be disclosed, and he would prevail. So. He had that down to an art form, and yet, while he was a uh, serious uh, advocate uh, for his client, he was not not a lawyer who would indulge in Rambo tactics per se. I mean, you could count on him for civility in the courtroom. You could count on him not to be guilty in any way, however slight, of contumacious conduct, because that was not his style. His style was by the rules within the white lines, and that's the way he played it. I wish I could tell you that he played cards that way, but that's another story, <laughs> and I'll say that for another day and another audience, another time. But the recipient of this award and the past recipients need to understand, recognize, and appreciate that they are receiving an award named for a man, a lawyer, who contributed so much to the quality of life in our community uh, by way of his practice in the law, that it could never ever be fully appreciated or recognized by anybody. This is just a token recognition in my judgment. We ought to name a building after him at the law school. We ought to name a courtroom after him at the courthouse because he was that lawyer who was comfortable in every forum, comfortable in every venue and able to obtain the, the confidence of those people who trusted him with their, with their lawsuits, and able to uh, uh, gain and earn uh, the respect and confidences of the judges that he appeared before. And he didn't back down or bat an eye to the judges. And, you know, with all respect to uh, members of the judiciary, and we've had some wonderful uh, judges, men and women, on our courts here in Harris County, but every jurisdiction has its tyrant, and uh, Harris County is not without that. We've had, we've had one judge that is 
so indecisive. He's got a seven-year-old child he hasn't named yet, but, <laughs> but, but be that as it may, Dave, Dave Gibson could understand those judges and earn their confidence and respect, and he conducted himself in the courtroom like you expect lawyers to conduct themselves, with a, with a purpose, with zeal for their clients, with a respect for the rules. And, uh, uh, and, and, and fight the hard fight, and he did fight the hard fight, and he was not, uh, uh, if you wanted to get into a paper war with Dave Gibson, shame on you, because he could outpaper uh, any lawyer that I knew. I mean, he was a basic paper war lawyer if you wanted that fight. If you wanted to get into debate uh, war with him in the courtroom, shame on you, because he was a champion debater from, I guess, from junior high, I'm not sure. but. Uh, he could, uh, he could pick out the points in his argument that were the most persuasive and present them to you in a way that uh, had you, even if you were on the other side, nodding your head in agreement. And I used to have to, when we were opposed to each other, which thank God was not all that frequent, I used to have to watch myself to keep from being in agreement with him while he was making his arguments. But it is a wonderful part of my life, my professional life, to have known him and gone to school with him. and practiced some cases against him and copied with him in the hall and had libation in the evening with him uh, after the hour to talk about law, to talk about cases, to talk about the foibles of our, our clients and our brother lawyers and our own foibles. He was their quintessential trial lawyer and I, I congratulate this year's recipient. You've done well.